guys, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to do calculations of preliminary coordinates using the triangulation method. So this method uses uh, your observed directions as well as coordinates to calculate uh, your p-value, which is the station you are standing at. Well, in this case you have three stations where you stand, but at p it will be the one that you are trying to determine. Now, just one, two things I want to highlight on this information you'll see that these two points um, have been observed by P, so 128 and 149, um, as well as P has been observed by both of the points. So these directions will be almost uh, 180 degrees difference because they are the opposite directions. Because these two stations are looking at P as the, and they also look at each other while P looks at them. So that means there's incoming and outgoing row. Um, so when we do the calculations, remember that when you calculate, for example, T149 to P, that's 133 degrees, uh, the opposite direction will be that plus 180, which is um, P to uh, 149, which is 313 degrees. So that is about 180 degrees difference to that one. All right, so we start with the direction table. Uh, now you'll see that all the observed directions have been plotted into the table, as well as the final directions. These final directions that are underlined are um, the final directions you determine using your coordinates using joins. So I've said before, joins and polars are extremely important in calculating anything in geomatics or surveying. Alright, then when you have these final directions, you put them into this column, then you determine the difference between the observed and the final direction. And you'll see that it's this final direction minus observed direction gives you minus 10 seconds. A uh, way to check yourself is if you say, okay, 38 seconds plus this value, uh, so it's a negative 10, will give you 28, then you know you've calculated it correctly. You do the same for the second one, Final direction minus observed direction gives you your final correction. Then you get the average of these two. Since there's two of them, you divide by three. If there were three of them, you divide, ah, oh, sorry, but divide by two. If three of them, you divide by three. Uh, then you'll get the average, which is negative 11 seconds, which you put over here. You apply this negative 11 seconds to your observed 2p. Uh, then you'll get 133 degrees, 37 minutes, and 45 seconds. So that's your first uh, direction, 2P. This one, we do the exact same. You take your two final directions, you subtract your observed directions, you get two final corrections. You add them together, divide by two to get the average, uh, then it's plus seven seconds, which you add over here. Then you say there's 22, 33, uh, and 8 plus 7 seconds gives you your orientated forward, forward direction. Alright, once you've calculated these two orientated forward directions, you move them to your orientated backwards directions. Now you take these two and you say these minus your observed directions and they give you preliminary corrections. You get the uh, average of these preliminary corrections and you apply them um, to, you basically say that plus six, you apply it to them to get your orientated forward directions. All right, now the way we do this is you would see that is on the side here we have 15 seconds, which is this 15 seconds over here, and 17 seconds, which is a 17 seconds over here. So we have to actually orientate, or um, we have to use these corrections to work out the proper correction. Now the way we do that, or not the proper correction, but the proper direction. So you'll see this 15 is now our oriented backwards direction. So this is from T128, sorry, to um, P. But from P to 128, we have seven, um, 17 seconds. So we always consider from P as the more important one. It's got double the value. That's why we'll take 
essentially what you're doing is you're taking this whole direction and this whole direction. But since the degrees and minutes are the same, we only have to apply the seconds. Then we say 2 times the 17 seconds because the 17 is from P to the other point, which is double as important as the 15, which is from the other point back to P. Hope that makes sense. So basically you say in your 15 um, times 1 plus your 17 times 2, then you divide by 3 because you've got 1, 2, 3 directions you're trying to average here. And then that 16 we move, put over here. So essentially we're taking two of these directions plus one of these, getting the average of them to get our final direction. The same applies to this one. We have a 43 degrees, uh, which is this one over here. It is from P. It is our forward direction or our outgoing direction. So um, this means that it's going to be times 2. And then we take one of these directions because it's not as important as the one from P. Then we divide them by 3 because there's 3 of them. And we get 44, which is our average direction and our final direction. Then we just apply these 6 seconds to both of these directions. All right. From there, we've basically, uh, you can pause on the screen if you want. This explains step by step what you must do in the direction sheet. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail because this is what I explained to you now. I can just show you that the forward ray represents double weight and the backward ray is single weight. That refers to this two times and this one times over here. So now since we have those directions, we now have oriented directions from P to 149, P to uh, 11, P to 128, and P to 140. So these, if I go back, are these final directions over here. All right. Now, uh, what we do is we have to look for the two that have the smallest angle, or the angle closest to 90 degrees between them. So if you're to go and minus each of these from each other, you will see that 149 and 11 have the closest to 90 degrees difference. So that's why we use this triangle. And the resection, we do corrections. Uh, but in this, we only use this triangle. Oh, we already determined final direction or the orientated directions. So we skip straight to determining our angles. Uh, we're in the Q-point method, you have to go through the whole process before you get to your triangle. All right, so now what we'll do here is we know the difference between these two directions is 102 degrees, which is the closest to 90. For this angle, we'll have to use 11 to 14, 149, 149 to 11. That direction relative to these directions to determine these angles. All right, so... Yeah, as you can see, T149 and T11 are chosen for fixed rate because the angle is the closest to 90. That's extremely important. Then we work out the join of 149 to T11. As explained, we need to first find this direction. Then we have the angles. Um, now let's just see, 106 degrees is from 149 to 11. So from this to 11, is 106 degrees if we use our join. So 106 degrees relative to 149p, we must remember when we work clockwise it's positive, when we work anti-clockwise it's negative. So this angle here, we'll have to say this plus this angle gives this, or we could say this angle or this direction minus this direction gives us this angle over here. Now since this is 313 this way, the opposite direction will be 313 minus 180, which will give you um, 133. Then you say that minus this direction, and it will give you your angle. So it's this direction, 149p, minus this direction will give you this angle. The same goes for this angle over here. Besides angles in a triangle adding up to 980 degrees, we must see that 11 to 149, which is this direction, the opposite to that will be plus 180 degrees, which will be 286 degrees. 
286 degrees minus 56 the opposite of 56 which would be 56 plus 180 then we say this one minus this angle gives us 50 degrees then we have our three angles so these are the formulas over here if they add up to 180 you know you've done it correctly all right then to determine our distances uh, to p from each of the two points each of these two points the, these distances to p we already have this distance because we calculated it using the join all right so distances to p how we use the sign rule uh, where we say uh, the, the distance which we determined from the join times sine of the angle over sine of angle at p so this would be angle 111 uh, and this would be angle 149 and we get our two distances for our directions we have to use um, these formulas over here so direction from 11 to p well basically well we have determined it already for example 11 to p will be this 56 plus 180 and that's what we use over here to calculate our polar sorry I meant it this one then this one is the opposite direction to this so it's 313 minus 180 so 133 we'll use that with this distance to work out the coordinates from t11 to p then we get the average of these two and that will be our preliminary coordinates for p all right so the second part is actually the same as the q point method uh, but this is the way we use triangulation to determine our preliminary coordinates for P.